McGraw and Millhaven on KTRS. We are moving closer to securing the Democratic Party nomination and winning this election in November. There's the well, this may not have been the year for a hopeful and optimistic message about our future. I still remain hopeful and optimistic about America. Matthew Dowd, ABC News political analyst, joins us. Matthew Dowd, that's now the fourth or fifth concession speech I've heard, uh, this time from Marco Rubio. And every time I hear a, cons a concession speech, I often say, where was that guy on the campaign trail? Yeah, it's, it's so fascinating that most of these guys' best speeches are when they're the doors hitting them on the way out. Uh, on the way out, it's an amazing thing. I mean, Marco Rubio's rise and fall in such a short period of time. Just a couple of years ago, he was on Time Magazine as, and under the banner of the savior of the Republican Party, and now he's gone. And the new face of the Republican Party, as of right now, is Donald Trump. Uh, the least liked in the party is Donald Trump, and the least likely, uh, least liked in the Democratic Party is Hillary Clinton. So out of 350 million people, we found two of the most least liked people to run for president. I, I think this is a, a, such a catastrophic place that we're in as a, as a country, and, a, and I think our political systems are broken and need to be redefined. The two candidates that we are likely to have to choose between are the two most distrusted and disliked candidates that have run into this entire race. And and that we're going to be made to pick between the two of them. Uh, many people say Republicans are in a much worse place than the Democrats. You've mentioned this a couple of times. Uh, are we realigning the political parties? Yeah, I think, well, here's what I, I think the expiration date, the sell-by date on the Republican Party has already passed. And I, so I think that, that GOP party as we knew it, as, as, especially as a national party, is gone. And so it's going to have to be reconfigured in some way whether it's this year or sometime in the next few years. So that the party as we knew it, the GOP party, and I think the expiration date on the Democratic Party is a slight delay in that, and the only thing holding it together is that they still had a Clinton to run that was popular, but the Democratic Party, I think, is going to be in the same position. Our political system that we've used with these two parties and the way they've been for the last 150 years is no longer working. Uh, do you see a t another two-party system, or do you see a three- or four-party system? Well, I think there's going to be emergence of another party, um, and I think it will. We won't necessarily see it in any strong way this year. We may. We may see somebody run, but I think you'll start seeing it in states around the country where people run for local offices and statewide offices under some banner, independent or something. And then the question will be, will the GOP fold? Will they keep and will have three? And I don't know the answer to that. We could end up with a country for the first time in, since the very beginning where there's three three dominant political parties. All right, let's talk about this one going forward. Does Donald Trump, do you see him having a path to winning a general election against Hillary Clinton? I, I think there's a path, but it's very narrow. He's at a disadvantage. But I, as I've said from the beginning when I you know, talked about this back last summer, uh, how I thought Donald Trump, because of his style and because of his manner, he is very unpredictable. And it's very hard to run against an unpredictable candidate. And I think Hillary Clinton would much prefer to run against Ted Cruz than Donald Trump because of that unpredictability. I think Donald Trump starts out with one of the most serious disadvantages of any major party candidate going into a general election. That doesn't mean he can't win and that there is some, a small path. It's going to be very hard. What about all the talk we hear about the get-out-the-vote campaigns and the voter registration and the, the, the data generated to sort of go after the individual voters? Donald Trump doesn't do any of that, and he's still winning. How is that possible? Well, you know, I've talked about this, this, this old-style thing of, of the way it works is we're in a new media environment, and we're in a new social media environment, and how people get information and what they want to hear they're looking for authenticity, and one of the best ways they can do is actually see somebody, hear somebody on the radio, see somebody on the television. And I think these, this old day of running a lots of television ads, they haven't been effective at all this year. And all these other massive organizations, people just want a sense of authenticity, and they want to see and feel you and touch you, whether it's in person, on the radio, or in some manner of electronic media. So the fact that Donald Trump refuses to turn down a interview <laughs> request turns it turns out to be a smart move. Really smart move. He has been the most um, the the most intelligent about the new social media and the new media and using it to his advantage. More 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 intelligent about that than anybody else running. Hillary Clinton and this email scandal. How much of an issue and how worried should Democrats be going forward? 
Well, I, it's an issue, obviously, because she's under investi- investigation by the FBI, and it may be referred to the Justice Department. So obviously it's a big issue. It goes away if there's nothing happened, and I think we'll know in the next 60 days, I think, whether that's moving forward. I think there are Democrats nervous about it because now they've, they've bought their candidate. Now she's going to be the candidate. And if that comes out in the aftermath of her clinching the nomination, it's problematic. But, you know, none of us have any idea where the Justice Department or the FBI are going with this. Uh, let's talk Republican convention in Cleveland. Is there going to be a floor flight? Are somebody, is somebody going to try and uh, take this from Donald Trump and the voters? Um, I, you know, last week I said it was 50-50. I think right now I think it's, it's 60-40 that it will happen. That will be a contested convention, which will be the first time in our lifetime that that happened. And keep in mind, two things people haven't, rem- haven't recalled on this is this will be the first time there's a contested convention with technology and television and radio in the midst of it, one, which changes the dynamics greatly, and two is this is the first contested convention where voters were actually involved. Before 1972, there wasn't really primaries or caucuses. The voters are now involved. The previous contested conventions were you know, smoke-filled rooms and they'd figure it out. Voters are involved, and now technology is involved, and it has a recipe. If that happens, it's a recipe for chaos. It's because the voters are going to say, hey, wait a minute, we voted for this guy. Yep. Any type of spin you put on it otherwise, he's our guy. And if he doesn't win, Trump's been saying there are going to be riots. I mean, it- it's, it's, it's hugely problematic for the GOP if he goes in there, which he likely will, with a plurality of delegates, let's say 1,100 delegates, and he's won 29 or 30 states, and he's gotten millions of votes, and they say, oh, by the way, you're not going to get it, but we're going to give it to somebody else. That's a major problem. How worried should governors senators who are in the GOP who are up for re-election and, and are going to be on the same ballot with Donald Trump? Governors less so. Um, I think governors less so. But senators, I think senators and some congressmen, I, I think, are concerned about it. They're concerned about what that does with the ticket. I think they'll try to separate themselves and say, and they may run a campaign of say, like, you know, well, I'll control what's going on. Send me there to control what's going on in Washington, whether it's Hillary or Donald Trump. So they may try to separate it. But Senators and congressmen on the Republican ticket should be concerned. Matthew Dowd, thanks for checking in. Great stuff. Great to hear. Thank you. You got it. Matthew Dowd, ABC political analyst, worked in the Bush White House, and he's with uh, ABC News Sunday morning. He's great. Seven. 